All right, questions 100 through 104. Um, the scientists study the relationship between the number of trees per acre and the number of birds per acre in a neighborhood and model the relationship using 4 plus 6x. Okay, so x is acre and y is birds. What is the meaning of the slope and the y-intercept? So slope would be right here, our x, and we know that x is the acreage, and our y-intercept is 4, okay? So we got to figure out what does that mean? So let's work through these. The slope is 6. This means the average number of birds per acre in the area um, with no trees is 6. Uh, no, we're not talking about birds. Remember, 6 is acres, okay? The slope is not 4, so that one's automatically not an option. D also says the slope is 4. All right, C says the slope is 6. This means that for every one additional tree, she can expect an average of 6 additional birds per acre. The intercept is 4. The average number of birds per acre in an area with no trees is 4. Okay, so C would be our option. So we're going to start with 4 birds per acre, and then with, when we add a tree, we're going to expect an additional 6 birds per acre. 101. Um, the total area of two rectangles can be represented by the expression right here. Which expression represents the total of the two rectangles combined? Okay, so um, I want the total of the two rectangles combined. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute some stuff. So let's see what we get here. Let's go ahead and distribute the x and the 2x. So I get 3x squared plus x, and then I get 2x squared plus 6. Okay, and then um, I'm going to add the, oops, sorry, that's a plus sign. And then I'm going to add like terms. So my like terms, that 3 plus 2 would give me 5x squared. And then, um, Oh, that's supposed to be a 6x. 2x times 3 is 6x. And then x and 6x give me 7x. So that would be D. All right, which value is an irrational number? Remember, irrational doesn't end. Can't write a fraction. Can't make it a fraction. Um, I mean, you can write it as a fraction, but the decimal does not end, okay? So let's plug these in our calculators and let's see what we get. So 4 plus the square root of 7. All right, the decimal version has no distinct end. Um, so that looks like it's irrational. Let's check the other ones. Square root of 2 times the square root of 8. All right, I get 4. Definitely not there. Square root of 3 oops, times the square root of 12 divided by 5. I get 6 fifths, which is a, is a solid decimal. And then square root of 3 minus the square root of 3 is just going to give me 0. So A would be our option. All right, 103. A random group of high school students were surveyed. Each student was asked whether it should be mandatory for all high school students to participate in a sport. And then here are my results. In the freshman group, so let's find the total of freshmen. Let's fill in this table first. All right, so 53 plus, oops, 53 plus 12 plus seven, give me 72, 18 plus 42, plus 12 would give me 72, 56 plus 67 plus 4 would give me 127, and let's make sure that this is 325, or 375, all right, and so then let's find these, so 7 plus 2 plus 12 plus 4, 25, and then 53 plus 65 plus 18 plus 56, 192. Okay, in the freshman group, what percentage of students agree that it should be mandatory for all students to participate in the sport? So my condition is that you're freshmen. So I have 72 freshmen. And out of those freshmen, we're talking about students um, that say that it should be. So they agree to the question, all right, and so I'm going to do 53 divided by 72 and then convert that to a percent, so that would be 73.6%, which would be D. 
And then finally, in number 104, the table defines a quadratic function. What is the average rate of change between negative 1 and 1? So let's create points. And let's find um, our change in y divided by our change in x, which is just our slope formula. So negative 1 minus 5 divided by 1 minus negative 1. Um, so that would be negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3, which would be C.